father was an artist and a sign painter. He had art materials around the house all the time, and the fact that my father was doing different things around the house that were artful was most probably the biggest influence on my art at an early age. My father would leave little notes around my studio. He used to, he would use the studio as a place where he would go and just spend time, get out of the house. But he was also a critic, and uh, I still got one on the wall in the studio that says, lighter paintings are more interesting, don't you think? So I have, I have him around in a lot of ways. One day I, I thought, gosh, I wish I had one of those old striping brushes. And then it just flashed. I did have this old sign kit that he used to carry to go on location to do signs. And so I went and looked, and sure enough, there was one of the, the sword stripers in there. And I, I did a painting using that. And sometimes I, I, I still go back to it. I didn't take my first trip to New York until 1963. My father and I took took a trip, and it was it was pretty exciting, as you can imagine, for me at that time. But we went to all of the major museums and uh, spent a lot of time looking at all kinds of art. I was amazed at the size of the buildings and how much art was in each one of them, and uh, what people growing up in the hinterlands is kind of what I think of Arkansas. What little we got to see, the abstract expressionists, which I was extremely interested in, did really large works. And I, I could read what size they were and imagine myself in front of them. But uh, it was my first chance to actually stand in front of them. And I really was uh, floored when I actually saw how big they were. After the New York trip, I definitely had the impulse to consider moving to a, a larger art market, uh, New York in particular. But talking with my father, he threw out some possibilities that I followed, which were to do the painting here and work at the sign shop that he had. It was a, a nice size company, and uh, he gave me flexible hours. and. I could also use the sign company in the evenings and weekends as a studio, which I did for a number of years. The thing that I started focusing on were the repetition of things like rafters in a building and uh, sidewalk, in, you know, how they're broken up and ladders and siding on a house or a building. and. When I would look at a landscape, I would see things. I'd see where a building is covering up a house, and besides that, maybe is a field that is being covered up by the house. And so where those things overlap became things that, that seemed to be charming to me, or at least would catch my eye. And so my paintings often are broken up into different shapes. Other people have written that it seems architectonic. It would be simply that it resembles architecture in a way, you know, or it's using techniques that you would see in architecture in different situations. So I relate to that, so I don't argue with it at all. And I, I feel that there is some of it that has that feeling, but to me it's, it's more that I'm enjoying the way a, a color will meet another color and rather than having them blend from one end to the other like so many abstract painters do it'll be an all over canvas with color all over it that's not appealing to me i tend to like things that show the tragic comic human quality of trying to build things that last and they don't last you know you've got that human quality mixed with the natural organic quality and I think that's what shows up in my work and the architectonic part of it is strictly that uh, you could imagine that there is some construction going on.
one of the things that makes mine a little bit different from the overall abstract artists is that I don't mind having a, a straight line go right through the painting at some place uh, that's defined by color or uh, shape or collage. So it's it's something that I enjoy doing and it's very surprising and very jarring to me and I need to have that. I need to be jarred or surprised or excited. If I tried really hard, I would say that I'm an abstract expressionist and the main principle driving my work is that one thing leads to another so that you have a I may start making marks and at some point uh, certain things fall together and suggest something to me. There's bits and pieces of dreams that are a part of it, places that I've been, places that I've dreamed about, and all of those are, are part of what I'm seeing being suggested with my marks. The misreading that I did of the writings of the abstract expressionists was, was a big motivating thing for me. They wrote that every day you face the canvas with a, a fresh mind and uh, like it was all new. Well, I took that to heart and so every painting I did was pretty much different from the painting that I did the day before. And I pretty much had to finish a painting in one fell swoop because uh, I didn't have the ability to paint on it and uh, have it as something that I could continue working on. I didn't know how to do that. I've learned and can work on a painting for months sometimes. At the start of a painting, it's different than it is towards the end of a painting as to the mindset that I have when I'm doing my work. At the beginning of the painting, it's kind of frenetic I'm not paying a whole lot of attention to anything except what one mark, one color, uh, next to another color uh, recommends. It's like we're in a communication, so it, it recommends something to me. And you go in and, and you make changes. So it's a continual ebb and flow of the ideas are not deep. They're very superficial and intuitional. As I get closer to a completed painting, I might find that the trips from my chair to the painting have slowed down. So when I go back and sit down at this point, then I see the cohesion effect, how much of it feels cohesive. And it's, a, it's an ebb and flow until, as Richard Diebenkorn said, uh, the West Coast abstractionist, he said, I know it's finished when the hairs on the back of my neck stand on end. And I think for me, it's a lot like that too. There have been things that I wished for in my art career that I achieved, and it was almost like that was the little mountain top, you know, to be accepted in my first Delta show. and then later to win my first award in a competitive show and you know that kind of thing so you know there were things goals that i set for myself but you know it has to do with me wanting to just keep working i'm painting whether i feel like it or not i don't wait for inspiration and that's a mistake for artists to do that you really need to be there uh, i think picasso said that uh, he believed in inspiration but it better find you working when it comes. Painting is something that goes on all the time, whether, whether I'm in the studio or, or things are coming to mind, but it's more like places rather than ideas. And so I'll be able to take some of this and it'll go to the studio with me next time I paint. I don't think of my paintings as being linear in that there's this long line of paintings that stretches on for miles. I think of it more like a string, a ball of twine, where when you roll it up there, the first marks that you made are really not that far away from the last marks that you made. And that really helps me keep myself grounded, I think, and being reminded about things that I learned and techniques that I still use today. Mm -hmm.